God bless you guys. How is everyone doing? Hope all is well by the grace of God. Today we're going to be picking up in the book of Acts chapter 3. We've already done chapter 1 and chapter 2. For those of you who do not know, we have a whole Acts Bible study playlist that we began. And of course, we've only done chapter 1 and chapter 2. We are doing chapter 3 tonight. But if you guys desire to check out chapter 1 and chapter 2, it is on that playlist that is up on my YouTube channel called Acts Bible Study. If there's any of you that desire Matthew, we've already completed the book of Matthew and there's a whole playlist that is dedicated to the book of Matthew. It's also called Matthew Bible Study. So those of you who desire to check out anything from Matthew and anything that we've previously done in the book of Acts, you're free to do so. Let's go on and get started. I don't like to keep you guys long. So chapter 3 in the book of Acts starts by saying, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So there's a lame man here that is brought to the temple on a daily basis. And this man here is asking for money. And he was born lame from in his mother's womb and here comes Peter and John who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look upon us such power I could imagine that look upon us that's such authority and there's about to be a demonstration here of power so it comes with authority and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them this is probably one of my favorite scriptures in the whole bible then peter said silver and gold have i none but such as i have give i thee in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk power this is the same peter that has denied christ and this is the same peter that's walking in kingdom demonstration and the father has given me a revelation when jesus said unto peter upon this rock i shall build my church he was talking to peter at that time and yes he was literally telling peter i will build my church upon you meaning you will do things that would demonstrate the kingdom of heaven that will cause the people to reverence me that will cause the people to turn back to me you're going to move in demonstration power and upon you i'm going to build my church you are going to go out and do the work of the kingdom and the church is going to be built upon you for those of you who do not know this is the job of an apostle an apostle is one who builds the church and Peter is very much an apostle. So the job of church building is upon the apostles' shoulders. And not only upon the apostle, but upon anybody who accepts their calling. Because the Lord is wanting to build his church upon anybody who is willing to step into their calling and give the Lord a fresh yes. Yes, the job of an apostle is to build a church. But guess who also builds a church? All of the fivefold ministry. A lot of people don't like to take it for literally what it is. Jesus Christ was saying unto Peter, I'm going to build my church upon you. You're going to go out and I'm going to cause you to have disciples. The same thing Jesus Christ did. Peter had walked in that same thing because Jesus Christ told him, greater works you will do in my name because I'm going to be with the Father. And yes, I know that's a scripture that I keep referring to. But I need to drill it into you guys' head so you guys break free of religious spirits that tell you guys that you don't have the authority to move in such as the apostles move. There are certain people that think that this kind of healing was only for the apostles and it's not true. We can still do these things today. It is still available. Find a place in the Bible that tells you that this was only for the apostles and then I'll believe. It has never only been for the apostles. I don't know where that doctrine came from, but it is doctrines of devils. And it is a doctrine of bondage that keeps you from walking in your identity and who Christ has called you to be. But anybody who answers the calling, whether you be a prophet, a teacher, especially an apostle, because the job of an apostle is to build the church. Every office is meant to edify the body of Christ and the building of the kingdom. Would you be a submitted vessel to allow the father to make disciples through you will jesus be able to build his church upon you will you submit and allow the holy spirit to build his church upon you would you allow the father to use you as a yielded vessel to build a church upon you for those of you who have been watching you know that my heater is here so if you guys hear that sound it is my heater that's why my hair is blowing like crazy and i need you guys to also catch this revelation jesus christ knew that peter was going to deny him he is god he was god in the flesh i need you guys to understand that jesus christ knew that peter was going to betray him and matter of fact he prophesied it onto peter when they were sitting at the time of sup right before the betrayal took place jesus confronted peter about it and told him you're gonna betray me yet jesus had also prophesied into peter's life saying upon you I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail. This is how forgiving and gracious the Father is towards us that he sees past our flaws. 
Peter was very much flawed. And we will look upon that as the religious and say, didn't Peter deny Christ? It's in the Bible, so we don't look at it that way. But let a modern day Peter come and attempt to do what, what Peter has done. And the body of Christ will completely dismiss him and shut him down. And the reason is because we're super judgmental as a body of Christ. And we've got to get over that religious spirit of being super judgmental to other people. Jesus seeing Peter's flaws. Knowing that Peter had a spirit of fear. That's why he cut the guy's ear off when they came to arrest Jesus. He was moving in fear. He was scared. And that is why Peter ended up denying Jesus in the first place. Because he operated in the spirit of fear. Yet the same Peter, Jesus Christ, would call to teach the word of God. Not only teach the word of God, but to demonstrate the kingdom moving in the authority of Jesus Christ. To do all of these things with such authority. And also he was very bold. He became very bold for the kingdom of God. If you go back in the previous chapter, it was Peter who began to tell those around him. When he began to mock about the gift of speaking in tongues, he's the one that stood up. and He began to boldly proclaim the works of God. And and he began to tell them about Jesus' good works and that this promise that Jesus Christ had left is now manifesting itself. So Peter goes from having the spirit of fear to completely being transformed. And this is the grace of God towards his people, knowing that you are flawed, but I will still use you until you get it together. And this is why you got to be very careful who you put your mouth on. People with a religious spirit tend to be very judgmental, but God is a God who examines the heart posture of men and he's able to clean you up and to use you never look at a person and judge had we been there and looked upon peter we would have looked at peter's flaws and think that the lord could never use him because he was moving in such a spirit of fear you know who else moved in a spirit of fear moses and look how the lord used him the lord is able to use any yielded vessel please understand that so be careful once again who you put your mouth on continuing on Verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. This was a miracle that was performed by Peter after Jesus Christ had ascended. So realize that the power demonstration that Jesus Christ had walked in, the apostles are now able to walk in it because they now had the faith to do so because they witnessed it firsthand. And our first-hand witness should be the Word of God, the Bible. Reading the Bible should build up your faith and allow you to know that if they did it, I can do it too. If you read the Bible and your faith does not increase, there is something seriously wrong there. You may be in bondage to a religious spirit that you need to break free from. And you need to pray, Father, help my unbelief. Because it is very important in the time that we are living in that you are able to increase your faith so that the Father can use you to do demonstration signs and wonders that will cause the people to turn back to God that will cause the people to reverence God because when you demonstrate the kingdom of God that's exactly what it does it points the people back to God so immediately the bones on his ankles and his feet received strength verse 8 and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God there it is right there what happened when he received this miracle he began to praise God just as we said when miracles take place the people reverence god and this is why it is so important that we step into our identity in christ and we begin to understand that we have the ability to walk in kingdom authority and we must realize that it's not for self-gain of course not it is to edify the body of christ and, and to cause god's kingdom to be established here on earth don't you guys understand that if jesus christ had came and he was walking on earth that the kingdom was here with the people the kingdom had come now that jesus christ has ascended into heaven the kingdom is still here with us we just have to tap into that realm where our faith is activated to know that we have the same authority to walk in that which jesus christ did and greater because that's what the bible says plus what the apostles did and greater because that's what the bible says the bible literally means that when he says greater works you will do because i'm going to be with the father i need you guys to understand that verse 9 goes on to say and all the people saw him walking and praising god and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him listen carefully what it says and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him the people began to acknowledge the impossible has just taken place because i've come here every single day and i've witnessed this man sitting at the temple the gate of the temple asking for money he's been lame for all his life we know this 
However, this man is doing the impossible. He's walking around. How has he been healed? These people are in awe of what just took place. Verse 11. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And anywhere that there are signs, miracles, and wonders, the crowd gathers. And this is why you have to be so careful with false miracles because anything that God does, the devil loves to counterfeit it. So yes, the devil is capable of working in signs, miracles, and wonders. That's why the Bible says that the Antichrist will do signs, miracles, and wonders. That will cause the people to believe that he is the Messiah. It is not only children of Yahweh, the God, the creator of heaven and earth, that could do signs and wonders. People can also operate in it from a demonic influence. So it is very important that you develop the gift of discernment to know not to run to every church when you hear a prophet's coming in town. It is very important that you don't let anybody just prophesy into your life, claim things over your life, because when it begins to manifest, it can cause all hell to break loose because it's not the will of God for your life, but you submitted to it. And because you submitted to it, the seed has planted itself and began to take root. And also be careful that you do not receive signs, miracles, and wonders from a false prophet because that thing can really mess you up. The demons that they have on them could begin to transfer to you before you know it. All hell is breaking loose in your life and you can't figure out why. But it's the person who laid hands on you. Be very, very discerning and very careful. You want a word from the Father? You want a miracle in your life? Go before the Father for yourself sometimes the father's waiting upon you for yourself and you don't need to go through anybody the bible says that you're a priest you can go before the father for yourself don't you know that the veil was torn why are you depending on man i understand that sometimes we depend on prophets to get a word for the season and this is why many of you are giving your money away to false prophets and pastors who are prostituting the word of god because they're not real they're not authentic people of god be very discerning and be very very careful verse 12 and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? And Peter is so humbled by the words that he chooses to say here. He says that this is not in our own ability. We couldn't do this by ourselves, but because of Jesus Christ. Remember Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it was only through that man known as Jesus Christ that this man was able to rise up and walk. And Peter acknowledges that. Realize that Peter did not move in the spirit of pride. Here comes the crowd and he's woed by the crowd. No, he wasn't moved by the crowd. As a matter of fact, he was humble to say, no, it's not us. Don't be moved by us. We're just yielded vessels. But the Father has demonstrated His power through us. God has chosen to demonstrate His power through us. This is not by our own doing. Don't worship us. Don't praise us. Many times we idolize those who we see that are able to prophesy, that are able to preach. We idolize people that are in the fivefold ministry because we think that they're super powerful. And let me tell you this. Anybody who is looking to be worshipped, anybody who is looking to be idolized, you're in wrong for that and woe unto you because the glory doesn't belong unto you. Verse 13 goes on to say, the, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers had glorified his son, Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Listen to how Peter is speaking of this is the same man that when Jesus Christ was being crucified, he was scared to die. Now he does not care. He's speaking up boldly. He's like, take my life. I don't care. Realize that he was running away from knowing Jesus when they asked him, you know Jesus. This is the man that knows Jesus. Now he's making it known. Yeah, that man, that's the man I believe in. That's the man whose power I'm working in to do these demonstrations. It's just amazing to see the transformation of Peter. Verse 14, But ye denied the Holy One and just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. So realize here that Peter confirms what Jesus Christ calls himself he is the way the truth and the life and peter calls him the prince of life verse 16 and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom ye see and know 
Yeah, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all so i need you guys to understand that jesus christ whenever he would heal somebody go back in the book of matthew mark luke and john any of the gospels when jesus christ was about to heal somebody he asked them do you believe because one must have faith in order for these things to come to pass and we know that this man had faith because when peter said rise up and walk the man didn't question Peter. He immediately got up on his feet. The bones in his feet and in his ankles were made strong. It is this act of faith to believe in what Peter said that caused this man to be made whole. Had he remained there and questioned Peter, I highly doubt he would have received his healing. But this man believed and he stood up and he was healed instantly. To God be the glory. Verse 17. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. So the very thing that the prophets had spoken, that they should know, Jesus Christ had now fulfilled it. The very prophetic words that were spoken out of the mouth of all the prophets, has come to pass and it has been at your hands that this thing has come to pass everything that the prophets had spoken you have caused it to come to pass the words of the prophets you know you study it you should know the words of the prophet we are a nation that knows the words of the prophet but yet we have rejected it and because we have rejected it we have crucified the very fulfillment of the word of the prophets and now the total fulfillment has taken place repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord and what peter here is talking about is the new jerusalem when the kingdom of god is totally established here on earth after the time of the great tribulation and the lord comes back and the bible says that that god will create a new earth and it is a mystery i don't believe anybody fully understands it as yet and i have yet to study the book of revelation to be honest with you guys and the very presence that Adam and Eve felt in the Garden of Eden, the presence of God, is going to be the same presence that we feel when God comes to establish the new Jerusalem here on earth. And I haven't studied into that as yet, so I don't want to get into that and get anything wrong. But that is what Peter is referring to, that refreshing time, that time of rest, when we hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. That is what we live to hear, and we live to be able to witness the establishment of the new Jerusalem, that we may live forever with the Lord and our soul may be at peace, and shall be able to feel the presence of God just like they did in the Garden of Eden. And there was a part that I did read, I believe it was in the book of Revelation, where the Bible talks about the two trees of life. And it takes me back to the Garden of Eden and the tree of life. And this time there is no tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's just a tree of life mentioned. And it's just a reminder to us that the presence of God will be there in this new Jerusalem that we are so looking forward to. Anyway, I'm going to stop there and we'll be picking it up in part two next time. This video is getting awfully long. I am 35 minutes in. This is before editing. By the time I edit it, I don't know how long it will be, but I definitely don't want the videos to get long because I know that people don't usually watch longer videos. They lose interest. And I do want you guys to be interested in the teaching, so I prefer to split it up in different parts. Anyway, God bless you guys. Take care. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Until next time, come back for part two. God bless you guys. Take care. I love you all.